going head to head against the might of the US Army. Racial prejudice is rife in Foyle's war tonight at eight. Now though, earlier than build and with strong language, it's Night Watch. Hello and welcome to Night Watch. Tonight, sex for sale. We're tailing the curb crawlers with officers from the Vice Squad, determined to stamp out prostitution by getting tough with their punters. Coming up, how the men react when caught in the act. You've got a prostitute in your car. Right. I don't know if she's a prostitute. Right, well, you picked her up off the street, haven't you? Well, I've met her, yeah, I wouldn't... You uh, picked her up off yeah. the street. Let's be honest now. All right, the yeah, game's up. Plus, the binge busters are out in force to give a sobering lesson to Christmas revellers who don't seem to know how to have a good time. I bet you wish I'd call for all this now. No, I do wish I'd call dates. Calm down. <laughs> We start tonight with prostitution. The act of one consenting adult paying another for sex is not a criminal offence in the UK, but many of the activities surrounding it are illegal. For example, touting for business on the street and curb crawling are both against the law. We join police who are determined to rid Preston of its seedy street traders. Let's watch as they surprise a few motorists they suspect of curb crawling. <coughs> The way we police prostitution in Preston, it, there's a number of issues involved. Uh, predominantly, we're looking after the welfare of the girls that are involved on the streets, because obviously they can come into contact with uh, other crimes, other uh, offences. Um, we're very concerned about their well-being. Uh, they're out here on the streets, they're unprotected, they're very vulnerable. Uh, we have to make sure that where they're working is safe, the behaviour they're undertaking is safe, uh, for instance, making sure that they use condoms to ensure that safe sex takes place. Uh, we're very concerned about them as a whole, but we're also looking at the curb crawlers themselves, uh, trying to lessen the impact that the curb crawlers have on the community as a whole. Oh, hey, there's a girl in that car. There's a vehicle just pulling out as we pulled in. Uh, got somebody in it, we're just going to go and see if that's... Uh, well, the wife and I haven't had sex for over four years now. I've just come home and we don't come work. Right, what sort of time of the night have you been coming out? Um, after half past ten. In the evening? At night, yeah. yeah. Half past ten at night. Right, well, it's half past I'm six now, isn't it? Tonight, right. Yeah. Alright. I'm early tonight, Right. We've had a number of complaints from uh, people inside There's the building. There's girls who work on Right, yeah, that's fair enough, that's fair enough. And, you know, that's why we've come down tonight, because we've been made aware that this is being used. All right. The company aren't happy about it, right. as I'm sure you can understand, because yeah, what's happening is members of staff have been coming out and yeah. certain acts have been seen to be taking place in the vehicles, all right, which obviously well, can be a bit... Said, right. I used to go to my own place. OK, but you can understand it, be a, it, yeah, can, it can, can be a bit distressing to yeah, members of staff of coming out and finding, all right. So I'm going to ask you not to use this yeah, of area again. Yeah, I'll let right. the girl who does use it now because she right. uses it every night. But she only comes here because of safety. She got attacked when she went out of town. So right. Well, I can understand. I can understand the safety aspect of things. All right. Well, we see uh, as you as you know when we do that, we do try and encourage people. We don't we don't try and point the finger, but we try and encourage people to be mindful of what it does. You know, this is the sort of thing that it, it can have a negative effect on people. Yeah. We're not as I say, we're not trying to jump on, down people's throats. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's but you know, you've got to think on about yeah. you know what's involved on here. You know, this girl is is particularly active in this area. Yeah, yeah. and we have asked her to keep away yeah. from this area. Yeah. yeah, we understand there's issues and about yeah. why women might want to work in prostitution. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right then. Get yourself off phone. All right then. Yeah, we've uh, received a bit of information from uh, the company that works in the building across from the car park uh, stating that they're very concerned about uh, issues regarding prostitution. A few members of staff have come out to the cars after uh, working for the day and come across certain lewd acts being performed by the girls in the cars. Uh, we wanted to come down and just check out the information for ourselves and lo and behold, first time down here we come straight into a van pulling out with one of our regular street workers in it. Some women will use 
prostitution um, for maybe a couple of weeks of the year to pay for some outstanding sort of bills or to pay for something like maybe Christmas or something of that nature and then they don't do it again for another year. Some may just move away, you know, and they think they'll have a new start somewhere else and or their boyfriend moves on or for some reason they're, they're in and out. And then there are others that, that, that are very much part of the community. Um, and uh, perhaps, you know, people say, yeah, well, you know, that, that I'm part of that community, but this is, this is what I do. It's the, the threat of enforcement, but offering an alternative as well. And certainly we have enforced prostitution. We've enforced prosti uh, the law about prostitution in relation to curb crawling quite vigorously. So we've done a lot of deterrence on that. <laughs> Yeah, he's gone back towards the prison. Stand by. Can you just tell me what you're doing in this area of Preston at the moment? I've just come to see a friend of mine. And who's that? Uh, we okay. Where does he live? Do you know the number of the house or no. which road it is? No. Right. All right then. I don't know if you recall, but you were sent a letter by us quite some time ago. I don't know if you recall when you got it. I can tell you when you got it. Uh, I'm not going to beat around the bush. It's an area that we've seen you driving around on numerous occasions that's known for street prostitution. Okay. All right. I'm also aware that you have been spoken to in Blackburn as well. That's right, yeah. Yeah. In July of last year, we saw you on seven separate occasions. Uh, All right. Yeah. And I could probably, um, in fact, I'll yeah, yeah. 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 All right. So basically, what we're doing is we're identifying people that we know are driving around the area. All right. At this stage, that's as far as it's going to go. We're going to speak to you now, right. give you a quick verbal warning, right. and as far as we're concerned, that'll be the end of it for tonight. Yeah. All right. What I will tell you, though, is if you do come back again now, yeah. then, as yeah. we will put it, the gloves are off, and that's we will right. take it further. You come back after this warning, okay, we're looking at arrest, name and shame, yeah. the works. That's All right. Yeah, yeah. So we'll leave it at that for tonight. All right. Okay, thank you for that. Okay. Yeah. All right, then. Thank you. Uh, as soon as I started telling him the evidence that we had, he held his hand up and said, fair enough, I understand where you're coming from. I've just given him a verbal warning and basically explained to him that if he does come back again, then the gloves are off and we're going to start taking stiffer action. Uh, I think he understood where we were coming from and hopefully we won't see this gentleman again. Officers will be continuing their efforts to put the prostitutes out of business after the break. Plus, the hunt is on for a gang of thugs who've attacked a man inside his own home. And police come under attack after a couple's night on the town ends in violence. What do I have to do with that? <laughs> I'm waiting for my kidneys, and you're waiting for your kidneys. I'm waiting for kidneys. All good things come to those who wait. Do you think that you will serve all your tastes? And wait. You won't be for so much longer now. And wait. <laughs> now it is down to you. How bad will it get before they cry for help? Do it by time. Um, yes, please. Even having a baby was easier than this. Service! Marco's Kitchen Burnout, Friday at 9 on ITV1 and ITV1 HD. Griff Rhys Jones continues to explore the people and history behind some of the world's greatest cities. Come through here. This is very, this is very good. Discover the secrets and stories. This is the original floor, the original Roman floor of Sydney, Hong Kong, and the Eternal City. It's just an archaeologist's dream. The thing that what I've just experienced there is something very close to the soul of Rome. Beginning with Rome, Thursday at nine on ITV One and ITV One HD. Welcome back. We're following the Vice Squad on patrol round the streets of Preston. Officers are acutely aware of the circumstances which lead women into prostitution. These working girls are often homeless, have already suffered violence and abuse, and almost all of them have some form of drug addiction. In an attempt to end this vicious cycle of despair, the police are turning on those responsible for fueling the misery, the curb crawlers.
Yeah, I'm going to be coming in the town for a bit. No, she's uh, obviously mindful of where our presence and shadow were with them, and I think they're going to arrange to meet up elsewhere. Steve, she's walking off towards uh, St Mary Street. I'm relatively confident they're very great to meet again. And he's just parked up on uh, Fletcher Road. Paul's well, in the side of the vehicle. Um, on New Orleans Lane, we're about to uh, come out and turn left up New Orleans Lane if you're around. Yeah, I'm making over, but I'm uh, a bit away at the moment. Try your best, I'll, I'll try and follow behind it. I might well have uh, given the game away up to now already. He's turning in to the left. Yeah, I'm there now. Come straight past me, drive straight ahead, and the car's to your left on the car park. Just a routine check if you can. Try and keep the car in your headlights. So you've, so you've met Where's this the girl? You've met this girl tonight, have you? Yeah. Uh, and when you say you met her, how have you met her? Well, I've been sat around waiting down at the thing here in, what do we call it, the, uh, the bowling place. I got chatting. The bowling place? Oh, Capital oh, Centre? Like, yeah, that's the one, yeah. So, right, so you haven't just picked her up off New Orleans? No. Right, let's, let's cut to the chase now. Let, let's not tell any more lies, shall we? All right, you've got a prostitute in your car. All I right. didn't know she was a prostitute. Right, well, you've picked her up off the street, haven't you? Well, I've met her, yeah, I wouldn't... You yeah, picked her up off yeah. the street. Let's be honest now. All right, the yeah, game's up. Right, All right. OK. OK, game's up. Mm -hmm. What well, you've just... What, well, what you've just done, you have committed the offence of curb crawling. OK. For which you could be arrested. Right. right. All right. right. OK. We're tending to try and educate people as to the problems that are affected with the curb crawling, all right? The nuisance that it causes well, I, I in the area that, yeah. and, you know, everything else, yeah. all right? So that's basically my message to you tonight, all right? Okay, fair enough. All right. Like I say, you're going to be uh, going to be entered just into our book to say that you've had a warning. Simple as that. Okay. That's where yeah, it'll end. Okay. That's where it'll end. Okay, all thanks right. very much indeed. I'm out of it. Okay. You've got to stay safe. You've got to keep off New Orleans Lane and Rivelton Lane for us, yeah. and you've got to keep off the residential. I accept what you're saying about right. the other streets perhaps yeah. being busy, Absolutely. but keep yourself safe. Yeah. 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 Oh, I know that anyway. I try. I work as little as possible. I stop smoking crack cocaine so I can get off everyone. Oh, good. Do you know what I mean? That's not a problem. But I still need to take everyone. I'm physically addicted. I've had some yeah. babies for God's sake and can't do it right. Oh. And that's serious, that. that yeah. is, when I push, you know, no gas and none of that shit, six babies, and I can't do my rattle. She seemed almost relieved that we'd spoken to her. Um, she she uh, admits to having a, a drug problem, uh, is currently struggling with heroin addiction, having weaned herself off crack cocaine. And this is the only reason that she's out here tonight, to, to get the money for that. And she wanted to get on some sort of treatment programme, but she felt that the only way currently open to her to get onto such treatment was if she was a, a prolific burglar. And she, we, she, we were having this sort of discussion about, well, do I need to up the ante of my offending just to get the help? And clearly, the answer to that is no. information we've gathered tonight as well as some of the uh, sort of warnings that we've given to people we are now probably better able to uh, accurately focus our enforcement strategies for the future and we'll now look at going out and using some enforcement tactics against uh, some of the women who continue to cause problems in uh, areas where we continue to receive complaints. I should call um, well, one of the estates that two males have, uh, have kicked into the flat in there and now inside fighting with, with other people down there. We've got a couple, of people, a couple of officers making the address so see if we can get there in time before they leave. Yeah, 
Asian male. Do you want to touch each other? Yeah, one yeah, of the discussions. Two Asian males, one white male. Okay. Right. It's headed generally over that direction towards rage. Right. Which is where one of them definitely got clashed with them. Oh, attacking with the baseball bat and four there. Two mobile. Do you want to make mobile phones, basically? Yeah. Samsung. Silver one. Yeah. yeah. They've taken the mobile phones. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes, two Asian males, one white male have come inside the address. We don't at the moment what's going on, why it's, why it's going on, and what's it relating to. Um, they've come in, as you can see, they've kicked the door in, um, and then by using a kosh. Once the mouse sticks and he expands, they've laid in to the chap inside. They've taken his mobile phones and other bits of items and left him covered in blood. Quite bleeding quite heavily from the head area, facial area. You can see the drops of blood in the hallway and on the windowsill. Ambulance say now I think I've look at him um, and that they will be taken up to hospital. Other officers are actually in the address, uh, picking up bits of evidence um, that they might, need, they might lead us to any offenders. We spoke to the locals and um, <coughs> no one seems to have seen anything at the moment. Kids are saying that this is a regular occurrence. People have been in the past have gone to the address with baseball bats. Drug use explains some of the things that at first glance seem quite inexplicable, like very, very nasty crimes, quite high levels of violence for what might seem a very small amount of money. Well, this is not a professional criminal. This is someone to whom the relevant amount of money is what can pay for the next fix. There's a, an absolutely huge link between um, physical dependency on drugs and crime, mainly because of the cost of, of illegal drugs and the fact that um, a large number of dependent drug users will need to commit a huge amount of offending in order to fund their drug habit. Um, so there is a direct link and a proven direct link. Thanks for that nightclub we went by before. There's a fight outside there now with a female. Yeah, sorry, just stay there with him. Yes, I'll get your boot fixed. I'm going there. I bet you wish I'd call all this now. No, I do wish I'd call it. Calm down. Can you get me boot, please? Yes, You've done it. You've done it. You've done it. You know. All I wanted to do with that. That's all I wanted to do. Oh, we'll find your boots, alright. It's not a corner, is it? Hold on. Put your hand back, Chuck. Thank you. Lads, can you go and walk on, please? Nothing to see. Keep going, lads. Thank you. I'll Thank check you. your bag in. Ten hours. Thank you. Basically, because it's again because the area is covered by CCTV, there's a disturbance been noted outside the uh, bar just around the corner called Storm. Patrols have attended. The first officers that were down have actually witnessed the disturbance occurred in the street between males. And uh, upon the these males being aware that the police were there, they've run and they've run this direction where we've come to now. They've been chased by the police, and one male was detained just over there. Whilst this male was being detained, the female that's in the back of our van has gone straight up to the police officer, punched him straight in the face in an attempt to um, get, the, get the police officer off what turns out to be her boyfriend. 
The male's been arrested, um, I presume, for either public order offences or suspicion of assault, and the young lady in the back of the van's been arrested for police assault. Why don't you be quiet, please, young man? All right. Yeah. Shut up. Are we getting them in together? They mates. Oh no, we've got to put them in together. No, it's right. Hey, it's my mate. It's my mate. They're in a separate van. No, it's right. It's my mate. Just put him in the back of the van here. Just get him out of the way. It's my mate. Stay there. Yeah. Do you want to step away? In my pocket. No money, please. It's alright mate, we'll look after your money. Me, can, can you give me a mate some money? No, not right now, no. Give me mate some fucking money, please. Do you want to stop swearing? I'll fucking swear all night. I, I want my mate to have some fucking money. Where's your money? In my fucking pocket, stop it, Dad. So, What's that pocket? Ooh. Oh, give over. Hey mate. I had to ask fucking kill that fucking bastard. Just calm down, it's finished now. I would. I bet you I'd kill him. I'll kill him. As far as I understand, what's happened here is that officers have been driving down here, they've come across some sort of a disturbance. Um, they've obviously got involved and the two have been arrested for public order offences. We've just sort of some stumbled across it. Uh, one detained in my van and another detained in another van. Take him into Preston. <laughs> so is he moment of fame now as a chance? You've bluffed it, you've blown it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you all right? Where are you off to now? No, mate. Where are you off to now? I'm just going to shop and back some booze. You going what, sorry? I was to shop and back some booze. All right, what have you got in the bag, fella? So, you still got your paper suits on from custody? When were you in custody? No, uh, I've had some help. Okay. Where's all this come from? This is mine. My old. All right. I do eat, you know? Yeah, but do you just eat salad cream? Oh, oh, I'm going to practice it in there, a bit sore at the moment, right? Yeah, hold on. I've got, yeah, look, I've got my bronchi, my bronchi. Why are you walking around with so much salad cream in mayonnaise? We have a look, mate. Do you don't mind me looking? No, you don't mind me looking? Alright. I won't be looking at these dead pieces of balls, to be honest. I've got a headache. What's up with you, mate? Yeah, I've got a headache. you got a headache? You've got to want to see the Elvis in that, innit? <laughs> I thought you were the singer. No, 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 you are. You are. Well, you got to stay happy, haven't you? No, I'm right now. I'm, I'm Life's too short, isn't it, mate? It is, you know, isn't it? Right. Yeah, it is. Fuck it was. Where's all this come from, seriously? There's a lot of solid cream here, isn't there? It's a shop. Hey? I've got it all for 25p because they are selling it. I say I was about to say you can do it if you want. Come to the shop with me. Which shop? The shop there, that one over there. I will down with you, big candle 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 I'm only looking through that because you let me, but uh, I'd have gone through a pace one official form with you if, if you hadn't have anyway. I've been arrested already. Hey? No, I'm not arrested, but I've been pulled today already. I got arrested already yesterday. I've not even been home. I want to go home, me. You're looking healthier than uh, yeah, well, used yeah. to be. Nah, I'm not Okay. It's good to see you looking healthy. I was so. Well, at least you're eating well. Anyway. I was off that way, mate. I was buzzy, so you not. Were you ready for running, isn't there? Yeah. When you heard the handcuffs? Yeah. Go on. No, it was your keys. You want to talk to me? I'm not going back. Good okay. to see you looking better, anyway. See ya. We've not had um, a shoplifting come in or anything similar. And it was all price tagged, so it looked like it was from a shop. And uh, it was all marked for 25p, which. I'm not the world's best shopper, but I think that's less than the going rate. So he's obviously got a bulk buy and uh, maybe thought he could sell them on and make a bit of money. So that seemed legitimate enough. Uh, so I was happy with him and on he, he's on his way. But he said he wanted to get home and uh, get changed. He still had on his uh, paper suit from when, <laughs> when he'd been in custody uh, yesterday, I think he said.
Time for us to take a short break now. When we come back, we'll be taking a different angle on police work as officers train to maintain peak performance by joining forces with the Mountain Rescue Service. Plus, the binge busters are out in force on the last Friday before Christmas to keep a watchful eye on the festive spirit. It's down to the last four on the road to Madrid. Absolutely fantastic. First time semi-finalists Leon face Bayern at the Alliance Arena in search of valuable away goals. It's Bayern will be looking to build on their impressive comeback against Manchester United. Come on, just brilliant! The UEFA Champions League semi-finals first leg. Bayern Munich versus Leon. Wednesday at 7.30 on ITV1 and ITV1 HD. We are Football United. The war may be over, but the troubles continue at home. I think we should recommend the colour bar be introduced. This isn't America, it's Great Britain, and we don't practice segregation. You ought never to have kept that baby. Other girls gave them away. Why is everyone so against us being together? Who cares about the colour of your skin? We've arrested Private Gabe Kelly for murder. I swear to you, Mr. Foyle, Gabe did not do this. Well, unfortunately, the facts appear to suggest otherwise. The new series of Foyle's War, Sunday at 8 on ITV1 and ITV1 HD. Hello again, welcome back to Nightwatch with me, Steve Scott. We're moving north to border country now, a vast rural area with some pretty tough terrain. It's a walker's paradise and one of the most visited regions in Britain. Policing this beautiful but perilous landscape relies on officers joining forces with specialist organisations like the Mountain Rescue. Here's an insight into the kind of work they do. A missing person, yeah, can you tell me the situation? It's early Sunday morning at Melrose Police Station and Inspector Doug Forsyth of Lothian and Borders Police takes a call reporting a missing person. And where are you about just now, Mr Williams? You're at home. OK, what I'm going to do, Mr Williams, uh, I'm going to send an officer up to see you just to get some more uh, exact details from you. Uh, and then once we've done that, we can assess what we've got um, and we'll, you know, we'll make an effort to, uh, to, get, to get Gwen traced. OK, so if you stay at home just now, and we'll have an officer up to meet you very shortly. Thanks now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. It sounds real, but in fact, this is the start of a carefully planned exercise, testing the skill of the local volunteer search teams. The exercise is designed to be as real as possible, and two local cops are dispatched to find out as much as possible from an informant who's been briefed what to say. Can you just tell me what's happened before I get in? We were at the party last okay. night up in uh, the White House, um, up the golf course road, oh, yes, uh, just in the Lincoln grounds. Uh, I left about quarter past four, maybe, uh -huh. this morning. And uh, so I obviously woke up again this morning and uh, Gwen's not, not come back yet. Is Gwen your wife? No, no, she's my cousin. Your cousin, um, yeah. Is, was, you, was she drinking last night? Yeah, I, I we, we all had quite a bit. Uh -huh. The two rescue teams are called out. These are made up of highly trained people with specialist knowledge in first aid and hill walking skills. They've become a vital tool for the police of G Division. With such a large area as the borders, it would be impossible for the police to provide enough manpower for a major search. We've got two mountain rescue teams down here and you know they're, they're very terrible mountain rescue. You, you, you expect them to be wandering the hills or, or the mountains down here. The, the search teams really, they're, they're civilian search teams. Uh, they are very much an arm of us and they're, they're, they're involved heavily with this type of operation, you know, an urban search as opposed to up in the hills. But the legal responsibility for the operations is with the police. OK then, can you all hear me at the back? I'll try and be as loud as I can, I've got a pretty soft voice, I know. 
So look, first of all, can I apologise for keeping you hanging about, but I'm sure you all appreciate that, you know, it's important that we get the plan right, otherwise you'll just be wasting no time. So thanks for hanging about for that. I'm now in a position to give you a full briefing on what we've got. I'm going to do that for the benefit of everybody. Once we've done that, there's the four identified team leaders, if you like, sub-leaders. Uh, they will then uh, get a full briefing from Stephen Jock in respect of their individual search areas. They are now being worked on just now. And then once that's done, it'll be case it out there in the field and uh, go find. A few of the team members are also part of SADA, the search dog group. Using air scent, they join the hunt. Ben, um, he's a bit two and a half year old. Um, and basically train as much as possible. Um, out in Hillland. But they work work on air scent. Go on, find him. We've got to think a number of possibilities. You know, right away you think, you know, the information we have is this female has been at a party last night. And right right away we think, you know, she's heading back home or heading back to her cousin's house. Uh, she's got a drink in her, maybe she's fallen somewhere. That's one scenario. We've got to think about the possibility of crime. You know, she, she, she may have been abducted, possibly. Uh, there may be some other reason for it. She, she's maybe happily gone with somebody. You know, there's that possibility as well. Police are now given the information that property has been discovered in a parked car. It now appears that a second young woman is missing. Now the search control, just a radio check, we need to find the car over. It's best to find the car, when we find these bones, we get identify these. We've got another set of car keys. Okay. They try and find it. if this is a car nearby. Okay, so they were found in the car? Yeah, that's, the car. that's the keys for the car which were in the ignition. Okay. And they were in the ignition. Yeah, she okay. may have access to another vehicle. Okay. The yeah. car is now secure. Okay, do we know what kind of car that is? Peugeot. 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 Okay, let's keep a hold of them then because they could be important to us. Could you have a look at the purse to see if there's anything in there just to confirm? Yep. Hopefully this is the person we're looking for. Listen, we have to clear this wooded area in here. We're just up from the house that the uh, missing person uh, came from. So what we'll do is uh, we'll define boundaries within this area and carry street searches uh, forward and back. That's fine. Yeah, we just head straight down using the, the road to the right hand hand wheel. Um, if we just sped out, uh, Kenny, yep. you must take the far end, you got a radio. Uh, yep. So you take the far end of the line. Set. The idea of carrying out a suit search is for us to stay fairly close together. Uh, we can lengthen or shorten the, the line depending on the terrain. And just to really clear this area and make sure there's uh, you know, nobody, nobody uh, hidden. Okay? Okay, Zuma. Right, advance! While local woods are now searched, the leaders of the team stay in close touch with Doug. The Borders teams are unique in that they've evolved search techniques to include buildings. Okay. It's a skill that's been used in big cities like Edinburgh to find missing people. Hello there. Hello. Can you hear me? Oh, I know it's awful cold. Can you tell me your name? You too, Okay. Okay. Oh no, what's wrong there? Can you tell me at all what's wrong? No, I tried to get out. You tried to get out. Did you try and cut did you come in from up above there? No. Did you? You don't know. You don't know how to do it. You got to an awful cold, aren't you? 
The locus of the first casualty find is uh, within the, the old Cheviot ward of the uh, Dingleton building. Yeah, confirming that Cheviot ward. That's affirmative. Roger, thanks. No message. Okay. Keep with us, the ambulance is just coming, okay? How are you doing? It's Mary, isn't it? Yeah. The skills are basically the same skills, but you've got to refine them and be more aware of searching underground and in buildings. No, everybody can go down there. It's, it's frightening when you go into places like that. So you need to get used to it, and navigation in there is very difficult. With the first girl found, it's not long before the second is discovered in a wooded area nearby. That's it, yeah, good girl. You'll be okay. We'll have you here soon. Okay? Today's exercise has demonstrated the close cooperation needed within local communities in essentially rural areas. Just as we thought originally, you know, you need to be careful about casualties and just not assuming anything and, and it's worked out great uh, from our point of view. You know, it's given us that chance to, to interact with the teams. Uh, it's given the teams a great chance to interact with us, I think, as much as anything. And it's given the teams themselves a chance to, to practice their skills, which they're always keen to do. And, and it just shows you how, how cracking these guys have been. Absolutely first class. Next, it's the week before Christmas in the town of Whitehaven. Local factories have shut early and festivities are in full swing. Extra officers have been drafted in to ensure drinkers don't overdo it, but on what's known locally as Mad Friday, anything can happen. Sergeant Weir and his team from the Whitehaven Community Unit begin what could be a very long evening shift. At the moment we've got um, around, I think, it's, it's 25 on duty. The, the incidents normally sort of peak between 5 and 10 o'clock at night, so um, we've got another, uh, uh, between sort of 5 and 10, I think we've got um, maybe around 35 officers out on the streets, mainly to try and stop trouble before it starts. Um, obviously you get a lot of gangs of mainly lads coming into town, um, and as you can probably see already, the pubs are absolutely packed. Um, and in previous years, it has become quite. We've had quite a lot of uh, disorder. No. For several months, the team's been running an initiative to curb disorder on the streets at night. It's aimed to reduce what's become a major headache, Mad Friday. Previous years we had quite, you know, quite big disturbances inside licence premises and outside early in the evening because people start to drink uh, a, lot, a lot earlier than they normally do. And you also seem to get the people coming out into town who come out once a year and uh, on their work night out and suddenly decide that they hate their colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> start to fight with them. Even though the heavy industry and mining has disappeared from the town, the tradition of the last Friday before Christmas remains. Drinking begins early and just keeps on going. <laughs> Excellent. Go on then, arrest me. The police have also been informed of a laser and fireworks show at the harbour. This could swell numbers, but so far it's quiet. Finding taxis is another point of tension. Whose turn it is to have the next one can provoke arguments. 
Get away. Get away. Go. Oh. Nab them. The streets are now much busier and tensions are developing. It's now not a good place to step out of line, as in confusion you can find yourself on the wrong side of the law. Go away. Tensions already brewing amongst the drinkers. How many more will exceed their limit before the night is out? Join me for more mayhem after the break. I'm waiting for my kidneys, and you're waiting for your kidneys. I'm waiting for kidneys. All good things come to those who wait. Do you think that you will serve all your tastes? And wait. You won't be the first one gonna have. And wait. <laughs> now it is down to you. How bad will it get before they cry for help? Do it by time. Um, yes, please. Even having a baby was easier than this. Service! Marco's Kitchen Burnout, Friday at 9 on ITV1 and ITV1 HD. Griff Rhys Jones continues to explore the people and history behind some of the world's greatest cities. Come through here. This is very, this is very good. Discover the secrets and stories. This is the original floor, the original Roman floor of Sydney, Hong Kong, and the Eternal City. It's just an archaeologist's dream. The thing is that what I've just experienced there is something very close to the soul of Rome. Beginning with Rome, Thursday at nine on ITV One and ITV One HD. Welcome back. It's Christmas time, the season of peace and goodwill to all men. Well, that's the idea anyway. But with a skin full of booze, that message seems to be getting lost on some revellers in Whitehaven. They're getting out of hand, and it's time for police to sober them up. <laughs> Bit of bad luck. Bad night to be a beer. <laughs> Why are you talking pot? Bad night. You've been arrested for being drunk and disorderly. Well, go and sleep it off in the station. Um, Give me your hand promise, now. Uh, promise we'll best Turn round. You're just going to waste tax taxpayers' money. We probably are. Get in. Control. There's two arrested D and D on um, Duke Street. There he is. Do you have to? He's honestly, he's only missing about. He's sober. Done. He's in. I'm stone cold sober. Honestly. Very good. But we're sober as well. From what we've seen, it justifies looking at the Honestly, he's hard. He wouldn't hurt to fly. He honestly, Done, isn't it? swear down, he wouldn't hurt to fly. Look like they were fighting. No, honestly. Right. Fuck you. It's really not that tight. Where you go? Yeah. I mean, they're obviously saying that the the mates and they're only playing, but. Well, we saw. It looks like the to us that they're knocking hell out of one another. Are you right at your side then? Huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll look, if you stick with them, Shadden, I'll go and see what's waiting in here and I'll boot one of these in. Not all those arrested are charged. Some offenders are taken to the station to cool off and are released later. It all depends on how you behave. Go on. Uh, 
Um, we're going to a report of a, a male that's been seen unconscious in the road just outside the town centre. Well, this is Brancy Road behind Tesco, so... Despite a thorough search, Sergeant Weir can't find any evidence that the man existed. 415 uniform. Yeah, we can't find anybody unconscious. Most of the revellers are just in high spirits and Mark and the team seem largely willing to play along. But it's a fine line and it can get you into trouble. Hey! Enjoy! Enjoy! Hey, hey! Enjoy! Hey, so run run off your name. Uh, we're right there, enjoy it! Hey, hi! Yeah, get get so run run off your name, no! Yeah. Hey, yeah, get out of the road and you'll get run over. Get over fog, yeah. You can't because I don't smoke. <laughs> the bar staff. Returning to the centre, an injured man's been found outside one of the pubs, and the alleged assailant is still inside. Somebody watch back door. Somebody watch back door. Two of you go and watch the back. He's going to have to go in for him. I haven't been anywhere near him. Uh, do we know who it is or not? Yeah, it's his mate. Where, whereabouts in the pub? He's in the back garden, mate. With hundreds of people inside the pub, searching could prove difficult and possibly dangerous. Instead, the exits are covered and a description is circulated. For JBH, aye. Right. <coughs> Further troubles kicked off round the corner, and Mark now goes to take charge. But when disorder erupts, it's difficult to find out what's happening. Just go, you, I'll go around and say what this is. <laughs> the main task is to separate those fighting without getting hurt. Get away! Get away. Go away, go. I've seen what happened to John. It's a waste of time. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Waste of time, please. Waste of time. Listen to what he says. Is that a lot? No, yeah. no, no, yeah. Take yourself away. Oh, that was clever. Yeah. It was I. Go on, goodbye. Go away. Just go and come and talk to somebody when you're not drunk. Go away. No, he's drunk. I'm not even fucking drunk. No, he's yeah. not even drunk. I'm just gonna jump out. You look drunk. drunk. Fuck off. Go away. Hey, yeah, I'm not drunk. Yeah. Go away. Hey, go. You look drunk. Fuck off. Go away. Hey, yeah, I'm not drunk. Go away. Hey, go. Go away. No, right. Can I stop out now? Just go away from here. Yeah. Just go away from here. Yeah. Stop out as long as you want. Just go away from here now. There's a lad being had a, a bottle stuck in his face in one of the um, pubs. And it sounds like it's by one of his friends. So his friend's been arrested for on um, suspicion of committing D JBH. And then while they've been dealing with that, there's obviously been some form of disturbance round the corner. Um, but I think another four people have been arrested, have been involved in that. And it's only 10 o'clock. <laughs>
The last Friday before Christmas saw 23 arrests by the police, many of a minor nature. One man was later charged with grievous bodily harm. And that's it for tonight. Thanks for watching, and do join me again for the next edition of Night Watch. Until then, good night.